Hey guys, my name is Mino. My name is Rohan. And this is going to be our first chemistry video. Uh, there is going to be more videos and we're going to create a series. But today we're just going to be covering the basics. So we have three topics in mind. We have accuracy versus precision, precision limitation, and significant figures. Hope you guys enjoy it. So let's talk about accuracy and precision. Accuracy is how close it is to the real value slash goal. For example, if the 100 is a goal or real value, 96 is closer and more accurate than 50. Looking at the target graphs below, on the left side, the points are very far away from the center of the graph, that's why you have the low accuracy. But on the right side, the points are more centered, and that's why you have a higher accuracy. On the other hand, we have precision. So precision is how close the measurements are relative to each other. So even if 100 is the goal, for example, 50, 47, and 55 will be more precise than 60, 80, and 90, since 50, 47, and 55 are closer to each other, even though they might be farther away from the actual goal. So if we reference the target graphs that Mino was talking about earlier, we can see that the top two target graphs have higher precisions than the bottom two, and this is because, again, the dots are closer to each other, even though they might be farther away from the goal, which is the center. Moving on to percent error, this is the error between the actual value and the observed value. To calculate this, you can find the experimental number, which is the observed value, minus the actual number all over the actual number. You then find the absolute value of that and times it by 100, and you get the percent error. So this percent error formula is really common and will be used in things such as dimensional analysis. So make sure you keep it in mind while moving forward. So now let's talk about precision limitation. This is the last digit you're allowed to report. So for both electronic and glasser, they both have different rules. Let's look at electronic first. For electronic, you're allowed to record the last digit displayed. So for example, on this electronic scale, you see 56.8. This is to the tenths, and you're only allowed to record the exact value, 56.8 kilograms. So next, we have glassware and rollers. So this is a bit different from electronic scales, where the estimated digit is one past the mark shown on the equipment. So if you look at the example on the left, it's a beard, so I would like to know if the readings are backwards. So we can see that the markings on the buret are in the tenths, so it would be 39.1, 0.2, 0.3. You can see those markings there. And we have to go one past that, which is why our precision limitation here is the hundreds. And we can see that the value is between 39.9 and 40, leading more towards the 40 side. So I would record this as 39.99 or 39.98 milliliters since it's not exactly on 40 either. And we can see on the ruler on the right side, again, the markings are in tenths, so we have to go one past that. So our precision limitation is in the hundreds. And in my opinion, that line is right on the dot of 9 centimeters, so I would record this as 9.00 centimeters. Your final estimated digit can vary a little from the real value, just make sure it's pretty close. So for our next topic, we have significant figures. This is numbers recorded based on the measuring equipment used, and it addresses how much you trust the number. Usually, your teacher will refer to this as sig figs. So when counting sig figs, you start counting when your first non-zero digit starts. And this counting order depends on if you have a decimal place or if you don't have a decimal place. So if you don't have a decimal point, you start counting from the right side. So we can see in 36,050, our first non-zero number is 5. And from then onwards, we encounter 4 digits. So it has 4 significant figures. When there is a decimal, you start counting from the left. So in 36.050, our first non-zero digit is the first number itself. And from then onwards, we have 5, more, five digits. So we have 5 significant figures. Now with scientific notation, you want to find the sig figs of the coefficient. So for example, we have 3.65 to the 10 to the 4th. We ignore this 10 to the 4th and we just find the sig figs of 3.65, which is 3 sig figs. So now we're going to be moving on to calculations with significant figures, and this will help you during dimensional analysis and stoichiometry. So, during multiplication and division, your answer should have the same number of significant figures as the number in the problem with the lowest significant figures. So, in 2.5 into 5, 2.5 has two significant figures and 5 has one. So we would want our answer to have one significant figure because it's obviously the lowest one. So normally this equation evaluates to 12.5, but to reduce it to one significant figure, we have to make it 10, which is one significant figure. Now for adding and subtracting, the answer should have the same number of decimal places beyond the decimal point as number with the fewest number of decimal places. So for example, we have 2.5 plus 5 is equal to 7. 
Now we all know that 2.5 plus 5 is 7.5, but since this 5 has 0 decimal places, as a stick fig of 1, meaning the answer should also have 1 stick fig, that would make it 7. Thank you so much for watching, this concludes our very first chem video, feel free to drop any comments you have, feel free to drop any questions you have in the comments below, and we'll be making content very very soon. See you guys.